yeah uh, good morning again in this class in this class we will be discussing about the sense organs of the insects so like any other organism like any other organism insects also should able to see the objects insects also should able to listen the sounds insects also should able to smell it insects also should able to feel the touch so like any other living organism insects also have wonderfully developed sense organs there are visual organs there are sound reception organs there are touch sensing organs there are some organs which also try to estimate the humidity and also the gravity so there are many number of sense organs in the insects and in this class we are going to discuss about what are all the sense organs present in the insect and most importantly in detail about the visual organs visual organs are nothing but compound eyes in case of insects so let us look into this picture i should just try to make a comparison between the cat and also the insect like like we have like other organs have so insects will have the organs of hearing organs of sense sight organs of visual vision organs for smell organs for touch organs for taste so insects also have this kind of organs there are some auditory organs auditory organs means organs which actually perceive the sense of sound there are some visual organs we know very well the compound eyes are very very important visual organs as far as the insects are concerned insects also have a organs of smell and the most important organ is antenna and insects also have organs of touch and the taste as well so let us try to understand so what are all the organs which are responsible for getting this kind of senses like i told you that there are organs of vision we call them as a photoreceptors there are organs of hearing can also be called as auditory organs there are organs of smell can be called as a chemoreceptors organs of touch tactile receptors and organs of taste gustatory receptors very very brilliant organisms the insects are very very brilliant they have a different kinds of organs not one there are many number of organs that is the beauty of the insect that is the reason insects are really successful on this earth we already know that the insects have a very well developed compound eyes organs of vision not one eye we have two eyes but insects will never have one or two eyes they have a many many number of eyes the compound eyes will have a smaller eyes that we call them as a unit that unit is also called as ammatidia 
So let us try to understand what are all the organs of vision. The first and most important of organ of vision is compound eyes. You can look into the insects at home, try to understand how these compound eyes looks like. Of course, in some primitive insects like Prochura and Diplura, there are no compound eyes. You can as well expect the absence of the compound eyes uh, in those insects which are actually endoparasites. Because they live inside some other insect's body, some other living body. So when they live inside of some other's body, they don't require vision organs. In all the insects, the adults will have a very well developed compound eyes, whereas the larva, no, they are actually blind. You can see that the many number of like in all the hollow metabolous insects, the immature form is called as a larva caterpillar, and these caterpillars are almost like a blind. They don't have a compound eyes. But as far as the hemimetabola, the immature hemimetabola, like a nymph and also adults, they have a very well developed compound eyes. As I told you that the parasitic insects, because they live inside the other organism. So when they live inside the other organism, they don't require compound eyes. They don't, because they are actually living inside the other organism. So they don't require compound eyes. That's the reason compound eyes are absent in all the parasitic insects. In this picture, just check it. For example, here, the red color compound eyes, which have a many, many number of smaller eyes, we call them as omatidia. And here in this case, the compound eyes are closer. But as far as this grasshopper, the compound eyes are separated. The compound eyes are separated. So that is the reason we call them as a holoptic eyes. Holoptic eyes means both the compound eyes are placed very, very close. Both the compound eyes are very, very close. That you can see in almost all the flies. That is the reason we call them as that kind of arrangement as a holoptic eyes. And in a in few other insects, the compound eyes are separated. There's a big distance between both the compound eyes and that kind of arrangement is called as a dichoptic eyes. So holoptic eyes and also dichoptic eyes. Now let us look into the arrangement of these smaller eyes. The smaller eyes are nothing but omatidia. As I told you that the number of omatidia may vary from insect to insect. And the unit of a compound eyes is called as a omatidia, which is nothing but a single eye. To accommodate more number of omatidia, the arrangement should be some kind of hexagonal type. So that, so for example, in this picture, you can see there's an arrangement of the omatidia at the outside surface of the compound eyes is hexagonal because to accommodate many number of omatidia. And they are very closely packed. If the insect will have a less number of omatidia, usually it is a circular kind of arrangement. You can see here. So there are holoptic type and dichoptic type. And also based on the arrangement of omatidia, it's a hexagonal arrangement and also circular arrangement. In case of insects in which many number of omatidia are present, it is always a hexagonal type of arrangement to accommodate many number of omatidia. 
and now let us look into the structure of a material how it looks so this is the structure of one single unit one single unit in the compound dye is called as a omatidia just check the structure in all the cases in all the cases omatidia will have two important parts omatidia will have a two important parts one is the outside of the compound is the outside cornea kind of thing that is actually to receive the light and that part is called dioptric apparatus so once the omatidia receive the light from outside and that light sense has to be passed through the a kind of sensory apparatus finally into the nervous system so the omatidia can be divided into two parts the first part is dioptric apparatus which is nothing but light gathering or optical part like in our case like our cornea like our cornea insects also will have a cornea like the nerves inside the cornea in our case similarly insects also will have a sensory system next to the cornea so two parts one is dioptric apparatus and the second part is sensory part naturally sensory part means the sensory part should have a connection to the nervous system should be able to convert the light into electrical energy because in the nervous system it's always electrical energy so here you can see the outermost part for example you take this is a cornea so this is actually a omatidia kind of structure so outside the outside part is called as a cornea and that is called as a cornea lens and this cornea lens is actually secreted by cornea gen cells two cornea gen below the cornea lens there are always two cornea gen cells which actually secrete the cornea lens and once they secrete the cornea lens their job is over and these cornea gen cells they just slide to the outside structure they just slide to the outside and they form a primary pigment cells it means the primary pigment cells are simply a modification of the cornea gen cells once the job is done and inside and inside the cornea is the outermost part that's what i told you this is the outermost transparent colorless layer and this is the one which acts as a lens and you can see here the cornea lens is always a bio convex so this is the cornea lens and one cornea lens is actually secreted by two cornea gen cells so once these cornea gen cells secrete the cornea lens then their job is over and they slide to the side and they form the pigment cells primary pigment cells or eye cells whatever it is and now after discussing about the cornea then we will go to the crystalline cone that is the second part of the dioptric apparatus so this is the crystalline cone a cone kind of structure next see this is the cornea gen cells and the crystalline cone a cone kind of structure this structure is formed out of four cells and you can see here there are two cells actually in fact it is it is formed by the four cells so uh, in a cone kind of structure so there are one two three four cells 
and this is actually bordered by the primary pigment cells which are formed out of this carnagen cells once the job is over the crystalline core it means the cornea receives the light cornea receives the light and the light sense will pass on to the crystalline core and the crystalline core is connected to the nerve cells or sensory cells that's the sensory part some insects may have a crystalline cone and some insects may not have a crystalline cone so if the insects have a crystalline cone it is called as a u cone type and if there is very you no know, very specific crystalline cone it is called exocon eyes so it means the second part of the dioptric operators next to the cornea is crystalline cone crystalline cone is formed by four cells and the crystalline cone is surrounded by the primary pigment cells and now let us move on to the next part is actually sensory part so here you can see the cornea receives the light because that's the one outside of the compound eyes so whatever whenever you see the insect the outside outside part you may be seeing many number of small small parts and all these are cornea of various somatidia so once the light is received by the cornea it pass on to the crystalline core and that light energy should be transformed into the electrical energy with the help of nerve cells that is what is called sensory part they perceive the light energy and they transmit the light energy into electrical energy in case of nervous system and this sensory part is nothing but retinular cells they are modified nerve cells only they are modified nerve cells only and you can see here the retinal nerve cells so generally there are eight retinal nerve cells all come close so there are some eight retinal nerve cells all come close and they are very long structure all come close it means there are eight nerve cells come together and forms the retina so when all eight retinal nerve cells come close and form some kind of long structure inside there is a small gap and that gap is filled by many number of microvilli many number of extensions and that central part that central part is called rhabdomia this is the one which actually receives the light so all these rhabdomia all the small rhabdomere from eight they come closer and they everything look like a rod that is called as a rhabdom so you can see here for example this is the retinal nerve cells i told you there are always a eight retinal nerve cells and retinal nerve cells are nothing but modified nerve cells and all the eight retinal nerve cells come come closer and in the middle in the middle there is a many number of microvilli which are coming from the retinal cells they come closer and they form some kind of rod like structure which is called as a rhabdom and that rhabdom will take the senses will take the light sense from the cornea followed by the crystalline core and then it gets converted into electrical energy pass on to the nerve system nervous system so because any senses has to be passed on to the nervous system most importantly here that like retinal nerve cells so how they actually perceive the light energy because they have some kind of wonderful pigment granules and these pigment granules they have a pigment called rhodopsin very important because of the rhodopsin only they receive the light senses from the crystalline cone from cornea to crystalline cone and they receive because of rhodopsin that chemical will actually receive the 
light energy, then it gets converted into the electrical energy in the nervous system. Very interesting. And that's, that's what is about the structure of the omatidia. But depends actually, uh, there are different kinds of insects and the image formation. As I told you, that the compound I will have many, many number of homotidia. And depends upon the insect to insect, the image formation vary, but generally there are two kinds of image formation. So you can see here, that's what, this is the cornea. So this is the cornea, one, two, three, four, five. This is again the cornea of another insect. So here the difference here is, so there is no gap between the crystalline cone and rhabdom. Crystalline cone and rhabdom comes very closer. That's number one in one kind of thing. And another thing is the sides are completely insulated by the primary and secondary pigments. And so that the light which is received by one omatidia will only pass through that nerve cell. It will not get transmitted to the next one because there is a clear insulation because of the pigment cells surrounding all the pigment cells around the entire rhabdome so that the vision will not be distracted and passed on to the next one and that kind of eyes are called opposition eyes because the light which is perceived by the cornea will go to the crystalline cone and directly from crystalline cone to the rhabdome because there is no gap and the each individual omatidia perception will directly go to the nerve cell. Whereas in some insects, there is a gap between the crystalline cone and the rhabdom. So when there is a gap, naturally the light which is perceived by the cornea will go here and there, that side and this side, and there is a very confusion image is formed. And similarly, in those insects, there are no insulation, primary, secondary pigment cells. That's the reason the image, the sense, or the light energy which is received by one wrap, one, 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 one omatidia will go to the next, and the other one will come here. There's a lot of confusion. So it means there are two. One is a position eyes, and then the superposition eyes. So a position is the image is very clear, remember, because each omatidia will have a clear light perception will go to the nervous system. There is no jigjag movement of the light. And the a position eyes are present in the day active insect. The image formation is very clear, adapted for the bright light condition. There are superposition. Remember, most of the times you get confused. A position means A means one. So light received by one cornea or one omatidia will go to only that nerve cell. Superposition means super late. So light perceived by one omatidia will go to the next because there is a gap between the rhabdome. There is a gap between the crystalline cone and rhabdome. So light will pass here and there. So that kind of arrangement, superposition eyes are present in the night active insects. So that's what I told you that there is no gap between the crystalline cone and rhabdome. In case of a position eyes, there is always a gap between the crystalline cone and rhabdome. In case of superposition eyes, which is actually present in the night active insects, that's the reason we call them as a clear zone eyes because there is a gap. So in case of a position eyes, the light received from one facet, means one cornea, pass through central portion and forms the image in the rhabdom. Very clear. Very clear. So there are some other kinds of eyes as well. They, we call them as a simpler eyes. And these simpler eyes are simple eyes also called as an ocelli. As I told you that the immature insects, which are nothing but caterpillars and larvae 
of heavy metabolic insects will not have the compound eyes they are blind they are blind but however they have a very simple eyes at least they should perceive some kind of light so these we call them as a ocelli very smaller and simpler eyes here you can see so they are uh, they are very sensitive to low light levels low light levels typically there are three ocelli in most of the insects three dorsal ocelli and they are also reduced in cockroach because in cockroach you don't find the ocelli and the small dots reduced ocelli is also called as fenestrae and these ocelli are very very important for the larvae of follow metabola because they are the only visual sense organs and that lateral sensory light which are present in the holo metabolus larva is also called as stemmata now let us go into the organs of hearing you know very well at your home you might be seeing a lot of crickets which make sounds similarly or you also know that there are some cicadas there are some cicadas which make sound especially if you go to the forest some kind of sounds you listen they are cicadas and some grasshoppers also will make some sounds but when they make sounds there should be some sound receiving organs there should be some auditory organs let us see what kind of auditory organs are present in the insects and this kind of auditory organ is a ears ears of the insects simply speaking they are the ears of the insects they are called as a tympanal organs and this we have studied when we were discussing about and the segmentation in the thoracic region and the tympanal organ is nothing but a hearing aid nothing but a ear and in grasshoppers and crickets they are present in the first abdominal segments and especially in the grasshoppers it is present in the first abdominal segment you can see here in the first abdominal segment there is small ear in the grasshoppers as far as the crickets crickets also at our home a lot of crickets are there and these crickets make sounds so when they make sounds there should have a ear for listening and that listening or ears are present in the crickets in the front legs at the base of the fourth tibia one kind of sound receiving a mechano receptors and the ears of the insects and the another important thing is johnston organ and the johnston organ is very very important ear or auditory organ in case of mosquitoes especially in case of male mosquitoes we already have a discussed in the previous classes that always as far as the antenna is concerned the males will have a very well developed antenna because they have to pursue the senses they have to identify the pheromones released by the females and the antenna will have a johnston organ and especially in case of male mosquitoes it is extremely important because it 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 is a kind of hearing aid for the mosquito for the mating purpose and of course in few insects there are some kind of auditory aids and especially in case of hawk moths you know the hawk moths uh the bigger moths actually so in case of hawk moths so they actually have a wonderful auditory organ which is present on the head so they have a auditory organs on the head in the hawk moths basically to actually identify identify the calls from the large bats because large bats are eating these hawk moths so bats when they keep on moving here and there then these hawk moths will identify the sounds then they will escape 
Now there are different kinds of auditory organs which are present in the insect. Next, organs of smell. Human receptors, organs of smell. We already know that's very, very important. The most important of organ of smell is antenna. Extremely important. An insect olfaction is extremely important because they have to identify the smell. They have to identify the most important of the pheromones. They have to identify the chemicals which are present in various are. They are released by the enemies. They have to identify the chemicals released by the different food items. So they have to identify the chemicals really, uh, present in various uh, plant species. So they have to identify the chemicals of uh, the released by the plant. See, number of chemicals has to be identified by the insect. And the most important chemical is pheromones for the mating purpose. And we will identify. So who is the smelling agent, smelling organ in the insect is the antenna. Antenna is very, very important. That is the one which actually identifies and all the chemicals, very important. That is the uh, chemoreceptor. That is the organs of smell. And we have organs of touch and organs of taste as well. So there are different uh, organs of touch which are present in the uh, tarsal segments. And also there are certain organs of taste, gustatory receptors in the labium, labrum and maxillae. That's what here actually uh, sense of touch. So some insects like migratory locusts will have a touch sensitive haze. And sense of taste is very important for all the insects to identify the better food and good food and suitable food. And these chemoreceptors are always present on various mouth parts like labrum, labium, maxillae, and all these things. And in some insects, they are, they do have the gustatory receptors or uh, sense of taste in the antenna and the legs as well. And besides this, there are some special organs which are actually receiving the senses. And uh, okay, they do can identify the changes in the humidity. And some insects also can sense the changes in the osmotic pressure. And especially mosquitoes, they have some organs which can identify the temperature of the host. If you remember, the mosquitoes will come to the person who has got high temperatures. So they have organs to identify who is the best for me to drink the blood. And there are some insects like desert locusts, which can actually, they can even identify the center of gravity. It means the insects are really highly developed. They have a different kinds of sense organs, organs of vision, organs of smell, organs of touch, and organs, so different kinds of sense organs are present. So that is the reason the insects are highly, highly successful on this set. And in this class, we try to understand about different kinds of arrangements of the compound eyes and the most important structure of the unit of the compound eye, which is nothing but omatidia, and how the structure of omatidia looks like, and what kind of there are different kinds of image formation a position kind and superposition kind and how these images are formed in different insects like a light, diurnal insects like the insects which love the light and nocturnal insects which insects which are roaming in the night time. And also we try to identify the organs of touch, organs of smell and organs of see, different kinds of organs. And even the insects will have a ears auditory organs. That is the reason insects are highly successful organisms on this earth. Thank you very much. And uh, in this class, we try to discuss about different kinds of organs, especially the sense organs. So with this class, we will end this class and then we will meet in the next class and from the next class onwards, we're actually going 
we are actually going into the subject of taxonomy subject of taxonomy 